Chapter 5, Learning Objective 4, Record Adjustments to Merchandise Inventory. At the end of the accounting period, a physical inventory count must be performed. The purpose of the inventory count is to verify that the actual amount of merchandise inventory on hand is consistent with the balance recorded in the accounting records. The costs attached to these inventory items are totaled, and this report is compared to the merchandise inventory account balance in the general ledger. Any discrepancy is called shrinkage, which is most often caused by theft and deterioration of merchandise inventory. The typical adjusting entry to record shrinkage includes a debit or increase to cost of goods sold and a credit or decrease to merchandise inventory. Now, before moving on to the next learning objective, let's take a moment to review all of the journal entries involved in merchandising transactions. First, we record the purchase of merchandise from a supplier with a debit or increase to merchandise inventory and a credit or increase to accounts payable. If there are any purchase returns and allowances subsequent to receiving the goods from the supplier, we would debit accounts payable to reduce the liability and credit merchandise inventory to reduce the value of the inventory by the amount of the return or allowance. If the supplier offers purchase discounts and we take advantage of them, we would debit accounts payable and credit merchandise inventory to decrease both accounts. If there are any shipping costs from an FOB shipping purchase, we would debit or increase merchandise inventory and credit accounts payable for the shipping company. Eventually, we'll sell the product with an entry that debits accounts receivable or cash if it's a cash sale and credits or increases sales. Now, don't forget that we must match the cost of goods sold against the sale with an entry that debits cost of goods sold and credits merchandise inventory to remove the sold product from inventory. If there is a return from the customer, we would debit the sales returns and allowances account, not the sales account, and decrease or credit accounts receivable. And don't forget to reverse the cost of goods sold entry with a debit to merchandise inventory to put the item back into stock, and then credit or decrease cost of goods sold. If we have a situation where we offer an allowance to the customer to keep the product, or if the product is returned and cannot be resold, then we would include the first entry to record the debit to sales returns and allowances and credit accounts receivable, but there would be no entry to put the inventory item back into stock with an adjustment to merchandise inventory or a reduction to cost of goods sold. When we offer early payment discounts and the customer takes advantage of them, we debit the sales discounts account and credit the accounts receivable for the full amount owing and debit cash for the net amount received, essentially the full amount less the early payment discount. Finally, at the end of an accounting period after an inventory count, if we have shrinkage due to lost or stolen inventory, we debit or increase cost of goods sold and credit or decrease the value of the merchandise inventory. Essentially, we're accepting that inventory losses are a cost of doing business. That's a lot to know, isn't it? So make sure that you review enough examples and work through some problems before moving on to the next learning objective.